are these people? Article by Ramsey Baroud. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some some reasons why Israel has been doing the kinds of torture it's been doing. Um, just as a trigger warning, uh, I, we're probably gonna be talking about this four letter R word that includes a particular kind of violence that some of you might be a little sensitive to. You can, so you can say SA. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we will be talking about so that we word say, as well. So if you so if you say S A, you know that it means yes. The I will. R word. I will probably be using the real words because I hate censorship like that. But you know, just come right. back in fifteen thirty minutes, or don't watch this clip if this kind of stuff triggers you. Um, it has less of the talk about that than you would think, so you might be okay. But I just wanted to warn people before we went into it. But, but you said that I didn't look at this yet, but you said that it wasn't as no, crazy yeah, as what it's mainly everything around it. it, yeah. So, okay. the title of now that we've given those trigger warnings, um, why Israel soldiers rape? Um, so we're gonna get into it. Mint Press News, Ramsey Broad. So, on October 25th, Israeli politician Moshe Feglin told Arutz Sheva Israel National News. That Muslims are not afraid of us anymore. Keep that in mind. Um, so, it might sound odd that Feynman saw the element of fear as critical to Israel's well-being. If not, it's very survival. In actuality, the fear element is directly linked to Israel's behavior and fundamental to its political discourse. Historically, yes. Israel has carried out massacres with a specific political strategy in mind to instill the desired fear to drive Palestinians off their land. Deir Yassin, Tantara, and the over 70 documented massacres during the Palestinian Nakba of catastrophe are cases in point. Israel has also utilized torture, rape, and other forms of sexual assault to achieve similar ends in the past, to exact information or to break down the will of prisoners. UN-affiliated experts said in a report published on August 5th that these practices are intended to punish Palestinians for resisting occupation and seek to destroy them individually and collectively. Israel's ongoing war in Gaza has manifested all these horrific strategies in ways unprecedented in the past, both in terms of widespread application and frequency. In a report entitled, Welcome to Hell, published on August 5th, the Israeli rights group B'Tselem said that Israel's detention facilities, in which every inmate is deliberately subjected to harsh, relentless pain and suffering, operated as de facto torture camps. A few days later, the Palestinian rights group Adamir published its report, Documented Cases of Torture, Sexual Violence, and Degrading Treatment, along with the systemic abuses and human rights violations committed against detainees from Gaza. You wonder why the Israeli sources are putting out these videos and information, right? It's because yes. they want to instill the fear. fear. They want you to right. hate them. Right. Like, that's the point. So, an incidence of rape, sexual assault, and other forms of torture are, marketed, are marked on a map. They would cover a large geographical area. In Gaza, in the West Bank, in Israel itself, Mostly notably in notorious Sid Taimon camp. We've we've covered Israel's Gitmo. Feel free to go check that link out. Um, so considering the size and location of the Israeli army, well-documented evidence of rape and torture demonstrates that such tactics are not linked to a specific branch of the military. This means that the Israeli army uses torture as a centralized strategy. Keep in mind when Kamala talks about sexual violence. You know, when in regards to October 7th, no mention of this, right? So, right. no one so, in our government really mentions that. No, like, such a, right. Yep. As I said in the last segment, um, you know, it's the idea of like she talks about Hamas and the torture and the da 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 da, da and it's like receipts. Where right. are the receipts? Uh, we have plenty, plenty of receipts online right. in terms of what the IDF has been doing. Yeah, but they don't share that shit. No. Nope. So such a strategy has been associated with the likes of Itamir Ben Gvir, 
Israel's natural security minister, the aggressive statements, for example, that Palestinian prisoners should be, quote, shot in the head instead of being given more food, are perfectly aligned with his equally violent actions, the starvation policy of prisoners, the normalization of torture, and the defense of rape. But Ben Gavir did not institute these torturous policies. They have predated him by decades and were used against generations of Palestinian prisoners who were granted few rights compared to those enshrined by international law, particularly the Force Geneva Convention. This paragraph, please keep in mind that getting rid of the leadership in Israel right now will not solve the problem. Solve the problem. At all. So, why does it's Israeli hate in the culture, folks? Torture it's Palestinians Zionism. on such a large scale, right? It's their they had, they teach their children this. They you know it's part of the culture there. So Israeli wars against Pal Palestinians are predicted on two elements: a material and psychological one. The former has manifested itself in the ongoing genocide, the killing and wounding of tens of thousands and the near destruction of Gaza. The psychological factor, however, is intended to break the will of the Palestinian people. Law for Palestine, a legal advocacy group, published a database of over 500 instances of Israeli leaders, including Prime Minister Netanyahu, inciting genocide in Gaza. Also, this fear factor stuff, I don't know if you've heard stories of them playing pornography to Palestinian people over there, like, uh, you know television like cable right being the first these are massively religious muslim people who don't do that sort of thing and israel doesn't right. have that same problem oh so, okay. okay yeah right okay. i was like what are you talking about but now i get it yeah so they do that deliberately as psychological warfare right it's been right. multiple instances of that it's why you see them put up tiktoks of stuff of Israeli people in women's clothing, particularly Palestinian women's clothing, all that stuff. This is all part of that warfare, right? So most of the re references seem to be centered on dehumanizing the Palestinians. For example, the October 11th statement by President Yitzhak Herzog that there are no innocents in, in Gaza, right, was part of the collective death sentence that made the extermination of Palestinians morally justifiable in the eyes of Israelis. Netanyahu's own ominous biblical reference where he called on Israeli soldiers to seek revenge from Palestinians stating, remember what Amalek has done to you, was also a blank check for mass murder, right? We talked about this in regards to the ICC ruling, right? So, right. while choosing not to see Palestinians as human, as innocent, as worthy of life and security, Israel has granted its army carte blanche to do as it saw fit. In those, in the words of Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, human animals, right? They have been called rats and cockroaches and just about everything under the sun. So, the mass killing, starvation, and widespread rape and torture of Palestinians are a natural outcome of these shocking dialectics. But the overall purpose of Israel is not simply to exact revenge, though the latter has been quite crucial to Israel's desire for national recovery. By trying to break the will of Palestinians through torture, humiliation, and rape, Israel wants to restore a different kind of deterrence, which it lost on October 7th. Failing to restore military or strategic deterrence, Tel Aviv is invested in psychological deterrence, as in restoring the element of fear that was breached on October 7th. Raping prisoners, leaking videos of the gruesome acts, and carrying out the same horrific deed again and again, are all part of the Israeli strategy, that of restoring fear. But Israel will fail simply because Palestinians have already succeeded in demolishing Israel's 76-year matrix of physical domination and mental torture. The Israeli war on Gaza has proven to be the most destructive and bloody of all Israeli wars, yet Palestinian resilience continues to grow stronger because Palestinians are not passive but active participants in the shaping of their own future. If popular resistance is indeed the process of the restoration of the self, Palestinians of Gaza are proving that, despite their unspeakable pain and agony, they are emerging as a whole, ready to clinch their freedom, no matter the cost. Colin, thoughts? 
What do you got? I mean, it's interesting. I'm, it's not to say I haven't thought of this as a psychological if war tactic. Yes. But it makes sense to me given what slave owners did to black people back in mm -hmm. the day. It's the same. It's basically this exact same shit. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but the only thing is, is that it's the idea of like, it's not that Palestinians fear Israelis. It's the idea that Israelis fear Palestinians. Yes, it's why they that's, it's why they talk about stealing their women and raping them, and it's why they talk about right. like the same thing yeah, that did, did it, your people. Same thing. Yeah. So it's like it, yeah, because and even now it's like the idea of like black men. Me. Yes. It's like somebody that should be feared in society. I don't see why look look at me i'm like <laughs> but, yeah. but whatever but like but that's the kind of common trope that we see you know immediate in terms of black men so it definitely makes sense as far as meanwhile it was anyone, the slave like, owners raping women and you know like right. that was what was happening so right but it was the idea of like we want to make an example out of you so that you essentially will be so broken that you will not be able to resist and that way we have hold yeah. of you which really if you think about it in terms since October 7th and I think um, it, it, you know it's not working because if anything you've radicalized not just the Palestinians but basically the entire world to the Palestinian cause in terms of now like you have people all over the world who are sympathetic more so if that probably ever before in probably history of the Palestinian struggle and their means for liberation. And, and so like, and so I think they've, instead of like actually being like, Oh, we can't do this anymore. They're essentially tripling down and going yeah. harder. I mean, we've seen this obviously with Yanyahu, but in a lot of ways, our government is also kind of complicit in that too. Um, so we are also kind of feeding the fear. But then uh, for Israelis to think that um, that Palestinians are people to be feared that have to be exterminated. And as I said in the last segment, it's based around the idea of like Isra Israel needs land as a means to feel safe, which yeah. I'm kind of like, I would argue that a Jewish person, and I, I'm saying Jewish in this case, but like a Jewish person at, at this time, in this country, living relatively, is safer than an Israeli living in Tel Aviv, right? Yeah. And like, but that is the Zion that you the heaven that you're trying on her earth that you guys are trying to create for yourselves in the name of what you say is a religious right to a land that is that you say was promised to you now by that tactic you can make the argument that like when i was a christian you can also make the argument too well essentially that kind of promise you know i should also have a claim to israel too as a christian right so does that give me the right as a christian to go over and torture the indigenous community who have lived on that land for centuries no so it's just kind of the um What's the word? The like, Jesus, I just lost my train of thought, but like, <laughs> uh, but no, Jesus it's the, <laughs> but you know, it's just the idea that Israelis have this idea that this is what's owed to us, and so as a result, we have to exterminate these people, which, um, which I'm kind of like, if a religion, quote unquote, and it's not, so let's make that very clear. Like, no religion really, in its purest form, would cause people to exterminate pe other people. 
like mm-hmm. in a true sense. Like, yeah, well, there, uh, well, there's been a couple instances well, of that. I'm saying, hol- I'm saying holistically. I'm sure. saying holistically. Like the way yeah. that we've kind of interpreted it as human beings, we kind of fucked that up. And, you know, especially with the Abrahamic religions, you know, Islam. Depends on what and, part of the yeah, book you're reading. Kind of, right. You, you know, right. but like, but, um, like, but go, go ask argue, about the Canaanites and see how God felt about them, you know? Right. Like, like even in if you are Jewish, the idea of you know being set apart as far as being a Jew was to be a light and an example to other people mm-hmm. that you're that will draw you that people will be drawn to them based on yeah I mean Jewish forces know, for peace on, definitely going to be talking about right, how their religion doesn't mean any of else. that not because. Oh, we have this land that was promised to us from thousands of years ago. So it's the idea of relationship, and at least in my mind, it's the idea of how you're able to connect with people and w- within the context of your faith and how that draws people in in well, terms of the connections that you're making with people versus. I mean, I don't, I don't know I, why you would you would follow anyone that was lost in the desert for however long they were i would argue you might wonder if someone should ask for directions but you know what do i know um yeah i mean it's just i i i wanted to bring the story because i think it's important to talk about the psychological warfare of this you know where that we've seen a lot of that and people always kind of wonder well why would they put that stuff out and you know why would they be doing that and it's i mean it's psychological warfare they want to put them back in their place pretty much and it's it to me it's the literal it's living heads on spikes right you know like what what better way to show that you are the biggest and baddest by putting out your victims to talk about how big and bad you are you know so I think it's part of that too. But talking about these things is definitely why we're demonetized. So you can scan that QR code on your screen. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network, or you can put exclamation mark donate in the live chat and, you know, leave us a couple dollary dues, help us, you know, continue to do what we're doing. Um, if you can't give monetarily, we get it. Just like and subscribe and share this video, share this stream, help fight the suppression, try to get us some more followers. Always appreciate it. Leaving comments, doing that kind of engagement supposedly helps. So do all those things. You know, we're, we're trying to get to 3K subs. We're, we're getting there. We're moving pretty good. So, you know, appreciate any support you can give. Otherwise, thanks for watching.